What's good, Bevis? IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. Who says Scousers can't dress? Hello, <laughs> Jazza Dickens. Yeah, it was raining in Liverpool this morning. I'm sweating my head off, so bad call. I was going to say, I don't envy you at all wearing a full suit. Um, yeah, this is what it's about. And it, life's about memories and experiences. And um, yeah, fight camp for a fighter, it don't really get any better. Yeah, well, this fight's got a lot of meaning to me. So to be topping the bill, will this be going on by time? Oh. Yeah. Topping the bill by in a venue like this on a massive platform. Very, very blessed to have a team around me who could put this together. I said to you, I feel like this is long overdue now. Um, the purse bids weren't that long ago, but then you were meant to be on the Canelo card with this fight and sort of had an idea that it might be on fight camp. It just feels long overdue. Yeah, eight years overdue for me. <laughs> is that it? Is that it? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, it is long overdue. Eight years overdue. We had the first fight eight years ago, so yeah. we've done a lot of sparring in between, but yeah, no fight yet. So hit the second one. I'm looking forward to it. You mentioned the first fight eight years ago. Can you take anything from that now? Because you are both completely different fighters, much better fighters, completely different level you're operating at as well. Um, can you take anything from something that happened eight years ago? It's a long time. I was expecting to have grown in the same way I have, you know. But from a technical standpoint, there still be flaws in both fighters. There's flaws in every fighter that you can both capitalise on, you know. So, um, different but the same. Yeah. Why wasn't this on the Canelo card? Was it sort of... Uh, admin issues, I suppose, visa issues and things like that, because we were expecting it, yeah, to be the, the co-main. Yeah, well, we were trying for it, but it felt due, due to visa issues. That would have been a nice nice platform, but I suppose, yeah, I always do believe that um, if, something, if something falls through, it's always for your own benefit, you know, uh, something better always happens, and, and that's, for me, that, that's better, because at least people who've supported me all the way can come and see me win the world title. Visa issues, have you got a criminal record or something? No. <laughs> <laughs> um... So yeah, potentially winning a world title after winning uh, the golden contract as well. When you look at perhaps the Regan Dow fight and the defeat from then, could you really have asked for a better sort of period of growth and a better succession towards a world title? Winning that tournament and getting this, like, it's been a mad couple of years, isn't it? Yeah, it was a bit of a whirlwind and done what I could to, done what I done and what I could do to keep myself relevant. I weren't relevant, you know, people in the States asking me, you retired at one point. I'm saying, no, I'm just doing what I've always done every single day, saying that, but... Just because you haven't been on your TVs, that's why you don't know um, what I'm doing, you know. And uh, it's like that. Boxing, box, boxing can be like that. One minute you're relevant, one minute you're not. And um, luckily for me, um, MTK Global and Tony Bellew and my team, Georgie and Derry, and all my sponsors about me all the way through them periods. Yeah. yeah, it's funny you say that because it's almost that sort of strike while the iron's hot. When you ain't fighting, no one cares about you. But now, for the next few weeks, you're going to be like of the talk of the town. You're the man, aren't you? For, yeah. for the next few months now. Yeah, you've got to enjoy these times when they come because they come very, very little and often, you know. Last time last time we fought, it was on Channel 5, top of the bill. Now it's the zone, top of the bill, you know. Um, and that was what? Twice in eight years. Two days in eight years. So you've got to make the most of it, you know what I mean? Because it's a, it's a long time, a long, long sacrifice for... for with a tiny reward, you know, but for us fighters, that's our that's our addiction. That's what that's what we work towards and it's worth it for us. Let's talk about the actual in ring stuff. So, um he's awkward, he's horrible, sometimes it looks unflattering, but he's a terrific technical fighter. Um I don't know, it's weird with Kid Galahad. Fights can either be really ugly or really interesting. Um I can't really pick how this fight's gonna go. Yeah, well, you, you see on the night, and you can say it's going to go this way, that way, but a goal goes on the night, you know what I mean? But, yeah, he, what you really mean, he's got no shame, and he's boring. That's what you really mean, Oscar. He's, um, he doesn't he doesn't carry his, his pride in there with him. He doesn't care how ugly it looks, and you know, if that's how he wants to fight, he can fight like that, but I like I like the the old-fashioned way, the, the way that boxing was created, you know, two men stand and fight. And I think you said you were living in his head rent-free or something. I, I feel like that's something you said last time you was on the channel. I'm sure something along those lines. Um, do you still feel like you're living in his head rent-free? I don't know. It's very cliche. I don't want to say it twice. <laughs> <laughs> but no, not really, no. I don't actually think what he's thinking, you know. I don't know. I, no. I, I, I do what I've got to do. I'd say, nah, the sacrifice. At the end of the day, going home to my family, you know, safe and healthy. That's the plan. That's, that's what I want to do. This fight as always, but that's what you know. It's all, it's all for them, and and selfishly, to be on a platform like this, it's even more worth it because your family gets 
when you're fighting the small old shows, it's it's good and reward for me, but your family don't see the benefits, you know what I mean? But when it's something like this, your family do, so I'm lucky and blessed. Yeah. An all-English world title fight, um, do we need sort of words? Um, like Kid Galahad has been very vocal with Josh Warrington and other people in the past. Um, obviously mainly Josh Warrington, but do we need something like this, like you mentioned about what you said before, cliche, whatever? Does it need words though? Like, can we just enjoy an all an all British world title fight, or does it need a little bit of needle there? I don't think it needs not unless we're two good fighters. You know what I mean? We can we can sell a fight on the facts that we can fight. Do you know what I mean? And we don't really need anything other. But the way the, the way the world is now, the media, um, people do expect a little bit more. Whether well, I give a bit more, that will just depends how I feel on the day. If I can give, if I can give, I can give. But um, I'm not going to sell my soul to I'm going to give you some myself, do you know what I mean? But I'll do what I've got to do to create big fights like I have. He hasn't been as active as you recently, and you are obviously coming off an incredible run of not just incredible fights, good fights, like hard fights, good wins. Um, Momentum-wise, is this in your favour a little bit, do you think? Yes, of course. He hasn't fought, has he fought for about a year or something? He hasn't fought for a year. I have never, I think the longest I've ever fought for about six months. That was a tough time because he had a broken jaw. It was um, it was depressing, you know, not being able to fight. That's how I see things, but I don't know. I don't know about him. He's been out for a year or something, so it must be tough for him, especially coming off the back of his first loss. Um, yeah, definitely the momentum's with me. And I remember in the changing room after the quarter final, I think the first fight in uh, the tournament. And I remember you saying, we're, we're not fucking about. Like you, you literally said, we ain't fucking about. We ain't just winning here. We're going all the way. Yeah. You're very adamant about going all the way as well. Um, seems like you're just fueled by self-belief. Yeah, well, I think that's what you can be fueled by. You know? If I was fueled by the belief of others, it wouldn't be here now. You know, it definitely wouldn't be here now. Um, uh, but that being said, I do have loving parents. I do have parents who believe in me. I have a partner who believes in me. My family believes in me. I've got a team, my coaches who believe in me. So... I've got a lot of support behind me, you know, but I think it just ultimately comes down to what you believe. And if you win this, I um, don't want to look past it, but if you win this, um, could you have a stake or claim as being the best in the world at your weight? When I win this, I'll be world champion. That's 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 where I'll be, you know, we go from there. Yeah. All right, Jazza, always a man of few words, but wise words, I'll say. <laughs> um, so. Jazza Dickens, boxer, podcast host as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Podcast. Yeah. yeah, if you haven't seen it, what do you say? Subscribe, click the link, check the channel. <laughs> oh, does that mean we have to put it in the bio now, I think? Yeah. In the bio, yeah. <laughs>